So you've just invented time travel. Well done, you clever little sausage. Let's go back and fix human history then. Before you leave though, why not pack a suitcase? But what to take, what to take? Well, obviously shoes, toiletries, clothes, and depending on how your time machine works, how about a fucking space suit? Because if your time machine works like a teleporter, what do you think is going to happen when you push the go button? Let's say you want to pop just five hours back in time for breakfast. Well, the Earth is orbiting the sun at about 67,000 miles an hour, so you're not going to materialize at the kitchen table, you're going to materialize where the kitchen table will be in five hours, meaning the Earth is now 335,000 miles behind you. Alright, so let's say your time machine isn't a teleporter, but just and that's even ignoring the fact that the Earth and Sun are also traveling through space together with the entire galaxy, and the galaxy is going at about 1.3 million miles an hour, so you'll probably just end up in interstellar space alone, and dead, and alone. And dead. Yeah, but really, let's just say your time machine is. Well, I guess you could launch yourself in a rocket, fly out to where the Earth is going to be in exactly five hours, somehow traveling faster than the galaxy. Good luck. Then turn on your time machine and hope you got the calculations right so you don't end up materializing in the ground when it catches up with you. But really, okay, let's just say your time machine is. Yeah, but even then, what? You're just going to rematerialize in the air, are you? What about the air you're displacing when you pop out of nothing? How dense is a person? Well, about 985 kilograms per meters cubed. Or air is about 1.2. 2 kilograms per meters cubed. So when you arrive, there'll be a huge compression of matter as you materialize, causing at best a bit of a whoosh noise and at worst a cheeky touch of, oh, you know, nuclear fusion. So, really, let's assume your time machine isn't a teleporter, but something friendly like a closed timeline curve, or a wormhole, or whatever. Great, so go wrestle Genghis Khan, piss in Caesar's lemonade, now, down to business. From here in, we'll assume that A, the past can be changed, and B, you're a sociopath. Let's see if we can nudge humanity off in a better direction then, shall we? Step 1, don't be dead. Before going back in time, why not make sure you stay the fuck alive? Pack antibiotics, lots and lots of antibiotics, especially doxycillin if you're going any anywhere near the bubonic plague. If you run out of antibiotics, and under no circumstances do this unless you are in fact a stranded time traveller, you can make very improvised penicillin by leaving moldy bread until it goes bluish. Also, if you aren't getting water from a well, or the rain, or an aqueduct, how about don't drink that shit ever? Boil all of your water first, then you'll need to filter it. Find something bottleish, add a layer of charcoal, a layer of sand, okay, and a cheer, you just beat diarrhea. Step 2. Get clever. Before you go, read up on the basics of steam power, harmonic oscillators, pendulum clocks, germ theory, modern military strategy, monarchic history, the schematics of the printing press, and all the card tricks you can stand. Use a mnemonic technique to commit stuff to memory. The good one is the personal action object system. Let's say you want to remember the dates of, oh, I don't know, solar eclipses, for no reason in particular. We'll aim for memorizing about 30 of them, so pick ones in the time and location of whichever era you're going to. Now you'll need to remember the date of the eclipse and the exact time of day. Now come up with at least 10 people, 10 actions, and 10 objects. So let's say we're trying to remember the number 326. Well, three Three in the people list is Winston Churchill, two in the object is Wash, and six is a unicorn. So Winston Churchill washing a unicorn. 326 is easy to forget, but good luck getting that image out of your head then. Next, memorize any embarrassing secrets we now know about the monarchy at the time you're going to, and congratulations, you now have the foresight of a god. Now, pack some gold, and silk, and nylon, and a laser pen, and an air horn, and some special chockies, because, yeah. Personally, as an English native speaker, I would wander back to 14th century England, because A, it's before the Enlightenment, and people will be way easier to bullshit, and B, further back, and there isn't enough metallurgy, and they'll be speaking Old English. But it's your time machine, do whatever. Off your fuck, then. Upon arriving, if I were you, I would rig your time machine so you can't possibly go back before whenever you've landed. Otherwise, if you screw up, you might be tempted to go back again and again and interfere with yourself, create a shitstorm of temporal paradoxes. Anyway, welcome to the past. It smells weird and everyone talks funny. So step three then, become a living deity. But first, remember that English is a bit of a work in progress. Even just decades back from our own century and you'll sound suspicious. Stick to the hundred most common words in modern English and you'll hopefully be alright. Still, if you open your mouth in public, you're boned. Locate someone vaguely trustworthy but not too clever, give them some gold, make sure they understand your instructions. From now on, they speak for you. Next, you need to dress up in all that silk and nylon. Nylon won't be invented until 1935 and silk is still rare in Europe at the time. People will love that shit. Now introduce modern music. The rhythms are so alien that people will immediately flock to it. My milkshake brings all the lads to the courtyard. They're like, it's better than yours, Jehovah. It's better than yours, I can teach you. 
but I'll check with the priest. Grand. Next, go out in the streets and get your spokesperson to announce the next solar eclipse, which you've memorized. People are going to freak out a bit, so let off your air horn a few times, flash your laser pen about a bit, make a song and dance a bit, yeah? When the solar eclipse happens, immediately announce the next one and claim it's you doing it. If people say, hey, you didn't do that, just say, y yes, I did. Teach your followers basic hygiene, teach them modern battle strategy, teach them the foundations of royal rule and how flimsy it is. People might talk funny in the past, but power still relies on more or less the same foundations as today, namely weapons and money. The monarchy will send an army and they will attempt to make you dead. You can't win against that, however clever you are. So instead, incite revolution. Most of the monarchs of the time retain their power by the threat of violence and the promise that God put them there by divine right. Invent Gutenberg's printing press decades before Gutenberg, begin churning out pamphlet after pamphlet laying out the embarrassing secrets of the current king. Step up antibiotic production, cure people of basic ailments, move you and your followers to a remote patch of the countryside, declare it independent, give it a flashy name, perform miracles every now and then, card tricks will go down really well probably, people haven't seen them before in Europe, have your followers track down the finest engineers of the day, I would recommend Filippo Brunelleschi and Guido de Villivano. Begin constructing basic steam engines, use them to pump clean water up from the ground for all your mates and followers. Have an elaborate underground temple built for you. Disappear inside with your time machine, only let your spokesperson come out and give orders. Leave behind extremely specific instructions about how to begin the industrial revolution early and grow your army and maintain your future empire and design good irrigation. Finally, have a very basic periscope constructed and stick it out the top of your temple. So let's travel a few decades into the future and see how everything is going. Slowly accelerate the passage of time. Day and night will begin to pass visibly in front of you until the sun appears a single golden line across the twilight sky. The seasons fleeting by in seconds. The fevered commotion of insects no more than a blur. And the flurry of passers by outside of generations waxing and waning. With great structures built in your name. The fingerprints of science and philosophy born long before its time. The drumbeat of industry coming alive. The development of modern medicine, of scientific materialism, of the mastery of nature, of the acknowledgement of the right of all humans to exist in a state of international equanimity. The dawn of an age when millions need not die of disease, of hardship, of war. You steer humanity now. There have been leaders and thinkers and sages throughout history, but none of them had your advantages. Now you can refashion history in the image of dignity and kindness and universal concern for every human alive, and all of it presided over by you, half human, half deity, moral, just, indomitable, indefatigable, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in apprehension, how like a god. Well, I mean, not a god technically because people can still revolt against you and you can't do anything about it. So let's try a few changes in tactic. To protect your master plan, direct technology towards absolute surveillance of the population, towards a perfect political science, towards total hegemony. If you want to help humanity, you'll need to live a long time, so order your scientists to research a cure for aging. Drop by to collect the rewards of the new sciences and become immortal. Enhance yourself with electronic augmentation. The problem with humanity? Too much freedom and leisure time. Remove both. Ban books. Ban mass communication. Rule undisputed. Technology in your left hand, power in your right. Dropping in occasionally to make alterations or dispense great justice and retribution in the name of peace. Shepherd humans out to the local planets, establish colonies, then spread out to the stars. Create a galactic empire, rule with imperious malice, lest humanity revert back to its bad habits. There'll be no love, except the love of you. There'll be no art, no literature, no science. Total domination, unimaginable power, unlimited rice pudding. Who could stand in your way now? Who would fucking dare, as monarch of the galaxy, as pilot of history, as god emperor of time? Oh, for fuck's sake, what does that say on the door, Mum? 25 meters filling certificate for... No, the, the other one. Don't come in, recording. Right, so... Well, sorry, I just wanted to know if you nah, had too late, I've lost my whole megalomania. Shtick. This video is sponsored by Ace Magician. Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we will be looking at an awesome mini PC with a unique design and features, impressive specs, and good performance. This is the AMR5 by Ace Magician. Now, this is a multi-functional PC designed for everything. Designed for personal use, your work, as well as some mid-range gaming with customizable levels of performance. So let's dive in, unbox it, and go over the specs and details. Alright, so let's do a quick unboxing. So this box just slides out of that box, and then you open this up. We have a nice little presentation. We have this sheet over here with some information on it regarding the PC. You can see that we have dual channel memory. It's expandable uh, storage and RAM. We'll look 
about that in a second. But you can put this aside for a second, lift this up, and inside you're going to find that mini PC. So let's pull this out. Okay. Very interesting looking device, and it does have a lot of RGB lighting. We're going to look at the details in a second. Let me put this here. Okay. And then over here we have. 